first of all, thank you for joining my uh, my talk. And I prepared some. Uh, I prepared for you some story about our experience with uh, Unity, and mainly uh, experience with Unreal Engine 4. So, I like to introduce myself a little bit. Uh, my name is Martin Pernica. I'm working as lead developer in Young indie studio called Solban Games in Czech Republic. Uh, my main work is uh, programming or the rendering or GP GPU programming or engine extensions, game programming, game logics, and everything which, which uh, is, is part of programming. And sometimes I do some not so cool stuff like CEO work. So let's start. Uh, I like to say this presentation is not targeted as the Unity hate or hey, I'm not working for Epic, so I'm not promoting uh, Unreal Engine for monies. This is only our experience with Unity and with Unreal Engine. So don't hate me for it. I know Unity Engine is, uh, is widely used for, uh, in, in, the, in the scene. So as I said, the Unity 3D or Unity is a uh, widely used uh, game engine. Uh, it has free, free version, it has pro, pro version, and mainly it's easy to use. This is, I think, the main reason why so many developers uh, will uh, will take Unity as their main engine. So uh, our studio, or uh, I, uh, worked with Unity for, let's say, two years. So I think we have a little bit experience with Unity. So. And uh, on the other hand, uh, we, uh, we uh, sorry, uh, when Epic released their uh, Unreal Engine 4, we was uh, quite amazed because it looks awesome. So we took the Unreal Engine 4 and started playing with it in, into the deep nights. And uh, we, we, uh, we discovered it's really, really great engine. And, but maybe for some people uh, can be a problem, it's paid. Uh, and it has royalties. So uh, this may, um, can be barriers for some indie developers, but I think it's not, it's not uh, the big problem. And also, uh, also it can be a problem because it's Unreal Engine 4. It looks like, for if you first use it, uh, looks a little bit, uh, little bit harder to, uh, than Unity or complicated. So why we uh, decided to use Unreal Engine 4 for our current project? Oh, we are indie, yeah. That's, uh, that's one of the reason. And as, uh, as proper indie, we have indie budget. So that's mean we have no money. <laughs> no, uh, we have limited resources. So uh, let's look uh, at the prices of the Unity. Uh, when, you, when you will uh, use the Unity Pro with Unity Pro Android and Unity Pro iOS, you will, you will save a really high amount of money, I think. Uh, also, it's a per seat, and on the other hand, it has no royalties, so it maybe can be good. Uh, but uh, Unreal Engine 4 is, I think, uh, less, less, less expensive for per month. Uh, also, it's per seat, and it has 5% royalties, so it's not so much. I think the previous version of the uh, Unreal Engine 3 or UDK, it has uh, 20 or 30% royalties. So this is this is really really good. So uh, from the perspective, from the view of budget, Unreal Engine is much much more uh, much more better for us. Also there are also there is a DRM. Uh, Unity is limited only to the two PCs. So uh, from for your work PC and for your home PC, uh, for example. Uh, uh, also, also, when you cancel the subscription of the Unity, you can't use Pro features anymore. So, it's it's not so good for indie budget. Uh, on the other hand, when you cancel the subscription of the Unreal Engine 4, uh, you can still use the latest, not the latest version, on the version uh, on the version of this month when you when you have still active subscription, and also you can you can have uh, the source code and release the game. So. <laughs> Let's, uh, for example, you can uh, you can pay only one month, create the game in Unreal Engine uh, for for uh, one year, and uh, after one year you can pay next month, upgrade the project and release it. So it can be it can be really really uh, really less more expensive than Unity. 
uh, but I don't think it's the best way how to how to do the game. Uh, it, because we are in indie team, we are a small team. It really, really crucial for us uh, to be effective, and our team work from uh, have to be really, really good. Uh, we have uh, four parts uh, in our development, which uh, which we have to be uh, really effective. Uh, one of the materials, uh, uh, the other uh, the other is game logic, visual quality, and engine programming. So these parts. I will talk about it, uh, how we became more productive with Unreal Engine 4 in these parts. So, materials. Uh, when we used the, the Unity, the R material process looks like this. Hey, uh, graphics say, hey, programmer, please, can uh, this more material will be, uh, be more shiny? Programmer, okay, tomorrow I will send you a new shader. Uh, tomorrow, graphics will say, thank you for the shader, but I think the previous version was better. Okay, programmers open window and jumps. Uh, it's not cool. It's not cool. It's it's time consuming, and I think uh, there are better ways. How can how can this will be uh, can be done? Uh, I think the graphic designer or graphic artist uh, needs to tune the materials by themselves. Uh, this really really uh, crucial part. Uh, as you know, uh, you cannot teach the uh, graphic design or shader lab, CG or GLSL, HLSL, and etc. It's, for example, I impossible, I think. Uh, but Unreal Engine 4 contains powerful material editor, which is really awesome for us. Uh, by if you are if you are uh, a Unity Unity fanatic, or how can I say it? You can say, hey, buy it. for Unity, you can buy the uh, material editor. Yeah, you can buy it. By but we like to uh, we like to use the whole engine. With all the parts, will be okay. Not the by core engine and by material editor and by other extension. And we don't like to build our engine. We like to have a stable, stable engine with uh, every feature we uh, we need. So uh, when we switch from the from the hey workflow uh, to the material editor in the Unreal Engine 4, designers are more happy. We uh, we uh, don't don't need to hire more programmers because they don't die anymore, and also the the results of their work is much much more better than before because they will tune it into easy editor. As you can see, there is small screenshot of the I don't think is a rain particle material. It's easy, it's simple, and I think this uh, this can be teach to every graphic designer and. They can tune the materials. They don't need programmers because, uh, you, uh, as you can see, there are blocks, and you can build the material from blocks. So it's quite easy. So Unreal Engine help us out, uh, help us in the material workflow. So our game is now looks more shiny without the programmers. So next part is game logic. Uh, often, is the game logic is the biggest part of the of your game. If you if you're developing your own engine, yeah, an engine code will be more than uh, game code. But uh, if if you're developing the game with game designers or level designers, you know they need to tune the logic and uh, uh, and the flow of the game by themselves. So, okay, uh, in the Unity we uh, we write the code using C sharp uh, with high level full feature language, which uh, was really good. If you ever program in C sharp, you know the C sharp is is good language, and you can express yourself by it. But uh, also, it's not so good because uh, when a game uh, game designer or level designer needs to change some logic, uh, also, uh, um, needs to uh, needs to say to a programmer, "Hey, please, can you can you uh, edit this logic?" And this is a not so good workflow. And uh, our goal was the same as material workflow: give game designers some tool uh, to create game using some modules or some blocks, and they can build the game logic by themselves. Uh, in Unreal Engine 4, we uh, use the native uh, native code in C++. And as you know, C++ is Quite a hard if you if you like to achieve it in high level, uh, and can be problem for programmer, for some programmer. But if you like C sharp, the uh, Xamarin released the plug 
plugin to the Unreal Engine 4, uh, and you can code in C Sharp as well. You can use async features, you can uh, use hot reload feature, and etc. So uh, our goal was uh, to give game designers, level designers, tool, easy tool, uh, when, where they can build uh, game logic by themselves. As I said, in Unity we used public properties. If you know, if you ever uh, write a code for Unity, so there is a screenshot from Unity. There are many scripts, and with public uh, public properties, and game designer can configure the the logic through them. But as I uh, as I said, it's not enough for us because we really need uh, the game designer, game uh, level designer, uh, uh, create by themselves the logic. So in Unreal Engine 4 is really, really awesome feature called Blueprints. Uh, the Blueprints are really exactly uh, what we need. Blueprints are a visual scripting tool. So it's, uh, it's similar to uh, Material, Material Editor. So for example, a uh, game designer can program by themselves, but uh, they, uh, they don't need to write C++ code or C Sharp code or uh, I don't know, JavaScript or an ETC. Uh, I think it's not suitable for every programmer because if you are a programmer, you know C++ code is also cool. It's much cooler than blocks and the, these stuff. So uh, this tool is excellent for the game, pro, uh, game designers and uh, level designers also. Uh, but if you are artist or you don't have s uh, skills in programming, you can create whole game in Blueprints. Uh, with some, maybe some small limitation, uh, but you can. So I think this is cool, because without programming knowledge, you can create game. I think this, this is good. So and uh, in our team, programmers uh, create, uh, let's say, modules or blueprints. Uh, with the, uh, and the module uh, needs to be sent alone, so uh, with maximum uh, program, um, configurable properties. Uh, we create functions, or, uh, some sort of events, and other objects. So, and game designer will use these blocks uh, to create game logic. So, for example, uh, I have it on the second slide, I think. Yeah, uh, uh, we eliminated the workflow when programmer needs to update uh, the game logic and send the code to the game designer. So, that's that's good because, uh, as you can see on the screenshot, uh, there are some game logic of the dash, uh, dash. Uh, and uh, this is a tool where uh, game designers, level designers can work. So we prepare some blocks, some functions, some events for them, and they will create game logic by themselves. And that's much cool, and programmers are now without work. Ah. Yeah, it's true. Uh, I will be maybe the last programmers in our team, by the way. Thanks to the Unreal Engine 4. <laughs> okay, uh, how, our program, uh, how our modules, let's say, works? Uh, if you know the blueprints are not overhead free, if you, uh, if you are optimizing your game, if you are, if you are performance freak as I am, uh, you need a great FPS, you need a great response from your game, so we, we decided to implement critical logic in C++ and uh, give, to, uh, give them to game designers as blocks in the blueprints. So uh, game designer will implement only the, let's say, call chain of modules and some events. As you know, in the Unity, you can buy extension for Visual Scripting, but I don't think it's good because Visual Scripting is uh, really, can be a uh, really big overhead for your game. And in Unity is uh, often written classic in the C sharp, and it's threatened as classic your game code. So it will be with more overhead than in Unreal Engine. So uh, we need engine which contains this feature, and engine will treat this uh, the, this technique with our scripting as first class citizen. So that's uh, crucial for us. I have some example how we work with uh, blueprints. So I don't know there is can, there can be read the text, but this is our first logic. So game designers say, "Hey, I need this." Okay, uh, programmer will prototype it in blueprints. So this is the 
something magic. Uh, after after some iteration, the game designer say, okay, this this works as I supposed, or he tunes by the, by himself some uh, some flow in the code or in the blueprint. So the blueprint will be more optimized. So some blocks will disappear. Some blocks will be written in C++. And after some iteration, as you know, there are bugs. So we will create some hacks in Blueprints. It's easy to create hack in Blueprints. It's much easier than C++. And after we are, we are really, uh, really, <laughs> I forgot this word. So uh, if you like the function of the, of the Blueprint, so we decide to move whole logic into C++. So after some iteration, we move the Blueprint logic into C++ for the better performance. Uh, also, we uh, we use some public properties, some public things in the C++ code, so uh, can be uh, used for blueprints. So next part is engine programming. Uh, engine programming is thing uh, what many developers can do because it's time expensive. It's uh, it requires uh, such a Really, really more uh, knowledge about the programming of the rendering and etc. So uh, many things of this uh, can can be useful for someone, but uh, for us it's really great because uh, Unreal Engine 4, if you if you subscribe it, you will get f full access to the engine source code, which is awesome. Have you ever uh, put your hands on the AAA engine? It's Cool. It's like a porn from programmers ago, <laughs> I think. Uh, so uh, when you subscribe the engine, uh, you will get access to uh, GitHub, and on the GitHub uh, you can uh, you can clone the source code to your PC and start hacking or learning. So, what does it mean to our team? If you are a programmer freak, you can modify the internal features of the engine. You can implement new features. You can uh, modify some existing features, but this uh, this is not big deal for small teams. Uh, small teams needs to focus on their uh, on their game logic, so uh, this is not big deal. But it's really really useful for us. Uh, for example, we are adding some features to Blueprint system. Uh, we are modifying uh, game, sorry, uh, engine UI, and we are implementing or using some our custom uh, return C++ libraries. So, but the most useful feature of the source code is this. Uh, you can hotfix engine by yourself. This is so cool because when you, when you found a bug in the Unity 3D, or Unity, if you, if you like, uh, you need to report it and wait, 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 wait. Uh, some bugs can be really, really crucial because as you can see, there is bug can't alt up back to the DX11 uh, cent alone. I think this this it's not so cool because many players will alt up to uh, chat on Facebook and etc. And after that, we, they will return to the game. Game will crash. I don't think that's not the supposed how it how it can be work, how it's working. Uh, and as you can see, is it was uh, found in uh, 4.1. And it was repaired after I don't know two years, if I if I correct. So I don't think it's good to wait such a long time for this crucial thing. If you I don't I I know the Unity is uh, mostly time used at the mobile development, but if you like to create a PC game with uh, uh, DirectX 11, uh, it's I think crucial thing. And there is also the, uh, there are some problems that are not uh, are fixed yet. Uh, as you can see, there are some problems in shuriken uh, particles. Uh, it's, it's reported in 4.0. Uh, as you know, there is 4.6 currently and 5 beta. So 4.6, and it is reported from 4.0. So I think it's, uh, let's say, one year. And currently is not fixed yet. I don't think it's a good. Because, uh, because if you create a game, you don't like these bugs. You need to work around it. You cannot release it with this. And how can you how can you explain to your sponsors, hey, sorry, we can't release it because the engine is bugged? Oh, okay, no. So your budget will be uh, will be lowered. 
and your game will not be released after that. So Unreal Engine, uh, you can fix everything uh, if you if you have uh, knowledge for it, and uh, at least is uh, developed not only by Epic, but is developed by also a community. So the new features, bug fixes are really really more frequently released than in Unity. In Unity, you can wait for <laughs> bug fix forever, and new features you can pray it, but it will be sometimes in uh, let's say Unity 5, and you need to pay for new version, and it is blah, 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 blah. But uh, in Unreal Engine 4, the Epic will release more frequently the code. Uh, the updates also with help uh, with community. So that's, that's awesome. Uh, after we clean some parts of our code, we will also push some uh, things if it will be OK. And uh, what is also uh, also great, uh, the official Epic uh, Unreal Engine roadmap is on Trello. So, if you if you uh, want some features and you don't have knowledge to to create it by yourself, you can create you can vote it for it on the Trello. So, for example, if you like the Rex is 11, uh, 12, you can vote for it. And really, Epic listening to it, this Epic uh, watching this Trello. Excuse me, and uh, they really release the most voted feature they release in the let's say next or s second iteration after after the m uh, after voting so this is great uh, i i don't think it's this is in the unity you can cry on the for on, on the forum on the uh, on the asphalt hub and etc but uh, no one no one will say okay we will implement it uh, but there is public roadmap and you can vote it so i think this is uh, also a great feature uh, next thing is visual quality. I need to slow down because I speak so uh, so quick, and my presentation is nearly to end. Uh, so uh, visual quality. Some projects, uh, uh, if you know, uh, already switched from uh, Unity to Unreal Engine 4 because better render. If you if you know the Republic Sniper, Evolk here, and some other projects already switched from. Uh, the Unity to the Unreal Engine 4. And uh, what is the reason? So I picked the screenshot from uh, Republic Sniper. This is the screenshot from Unity Build. As you can see, there are sucks anti lazing by the way. And in the version of uh, from the Unreal Engine, it looks like this. You know, there are quite a different textures, I think, but if you compare it, it's really, really big difference between this. I uh, I don't want to say Unity is not good. If you look, uh, uh, for example, on the Ori or the other other projects uh, which use uh, the Unity, uh, they are pretty. They are good, but uh, behind of it is really, really uh, so much work. In Unreal Engine, Eng uh, Engine 4, you can get visual quality better by default. So, uh, which features are, are uh, interested in uh, Unreal Engine 4? For example, if you, if you need uh, great graphic, you need DirectX 11. So, Unreal Engine 4 contains the fully implemented DirectX 11 renderer. For example, on the other hand, the Unity engine is not so good DirectX 11 renderer, but we cannot see to the source code, but after some uh, some studies of the reaction of the engine uh, with some direct in us features, uh, <laughs> 11, sorry, uh, features. Uh, I think the fully implemented is not in Unity. Uh, on the other hand, you can use physical based shading. This is the feature which will be applied in Unity 5, and Unity 5 will be applied maybe half year, one year, who knows. So already you can use the magic word PBR in, uh, in Unreal Engine 4. Uh, for example, there is global animation, uh, ES lighting profiles, and others. Uh, uh, what what is cool is uh, the GPU particles. If you are uh, were, you know, if you are creating game which is really particle dependent, for example, our game is because we're using smokes, rains, and many many effects. So GPU particles can, can increase uh, can increase uh, your free, uh, FPS. Uh, 
which is cool because you can create more more attractive effects in your game. Also, you can uh, you can put uh, put uh, the light to the particles, so particles will be uh, looks uh, looks much more better. Uh, Unreal Engine 4 have deferred renderer, so deferred render have little bit of limitation about anti-aliasing, so you cannot implement the classic method of the anti-aliasing. Uh, so Unreal Engine 4 using temporal anti-aliasing, and which is really good, and I think it's nearly overhead free. So it's good because if you if you look to the Unity, the many problems, uh, many visual problems are are from missing uh, missing uh, anti-aliasing. Uh, what is good also this, there is multi-threaded renderer, so there is uh, FPS gain. Uh, next thing is dynamic occlusion culling. If you are building big 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 game with uh, big cities, big, uh, I don't know, environment, and etc. Uh, in Unity 3D, you need to bake everything before you release the game. I think they're using Umbra. I don't know if he's saying this uh, good. But in other region 4, you can have dynamic occlusion culling. Uh, so uh, you, can, you can dynamically, dynamically uh, modify your game on the Based on the game logic, so when you you can let's say disable, uh, destroy some some buildings, you can add some buildings and other and other stuff. In Unity uh, 3D, you cannot uh, do it because the occlusion culling informations are pre-baked to the release version. So uh, so you cannot do dynamic environments. Or, but if you look to the asset store of the Unity, uh, yeah, there is plugin for the uh, dynamic occlusion culling, which using ray tracing. To, uh, to identify which objects are on the scene, but oh, it's not so good as in Unreal Engine 4. So, oh, my slides. Okay, uh, as I said, there are some other things. Uh, we have really great experience with Unreal Engine uh, email support and also with uh, Forum and Answer Hub. Uh, Often some epic stuff, <laughs> stuff from Epic, uh, comes to discussion, discuss and help us. So that's awesome because on the Unity forum there are many people from community, but few people from the Unity itself. And our project is targeting maybe to the next gen consoles. So we uh, ask some question about next gen development uh, to the Epic, and uh, we we get. It's nearly immediately response about one hour, but we also uh, send email to Unity and we wait one and a half week, so uh, that's not so good. And by the way, we tried to send same email with same requirements uh, to the CryEngine team and we wait one month for the reaction. So I know we are indie team and Crytech may be, may be not interested in indie teams, but one month for reaction? Huh. Okay, so this is a really important thing because when you're using new new engine, uh, you need support from the from the community, from the uh, from the staff. It's much more better to get answer from Epic staff uh, than community sometimes, but because uh, because the uh, the answer will be more uh, more precise and more, it will be good good than from community. Uh, as I said, in Unity forums, we uh, we only communicated with uh, with people from community, but uh, not from every anyone from uh, Unity itself. So this is the really great, I think. And oh, I have a duplicate slide here. Okay, okay, okay. So I need to slow down because our time is it's uh, okay. As I said, Unity Engine uh, is widely used, and because it's easy to use, uh, Unreal Four can be harder to use, and it's not option uh, for everybody. And it's not silver bullet for everybody for potential problems with Unity. So uh, don't don't take my presentation as now. Subscribe and use it for your project. Rewrite everything and use the Unreal Engine. No. You can you can have more problems with it, but uh, for our team, Unreal Engine uh, 4 was much better choice than uh, Unity. Maybe maybe some uh, people from Unity can 
can help me with uh, with some arguing about it. But Unreal Engine 4 is much better for us. Uh, from my personal view, I think if you are a single developer, uh, creating some small game in Unity, uh, let's say for mobile, Android, iOS, and etc., it will be, I think, easier to use Unity, but expensive, really expensive to use Unity. But if you are a team, two or more people, you can be more effective in Unreal Engine 4. So I think that's good. And uh, uh, before the questions, I like to show you our teaser. Uh, the teaser is rendered from uh, from the Unreal Engine 4. So wait, I will prepare it. There was a time when I thought this goddamn city had some hope. I was so naive, blinded by my shiny new life. But pride comes before the fall. And this place turned out to be a pit that pulled me down with it. I became an outcast. There's trash in a society saturated with fear and hypocrisy. If it weren't for her, I'd have blown this place a long time ago. Ah, uh, I should have done it. While everyone else suffers, the corrupt authorities just line their own pockets and kiss up to them. Greedy, bureaucratic bastards living high off the hog. I could see there was nothing good waiting for me here. So this is the alpha version of our teaser. Uh, the every is rendered in Unreal 4. And by the way, everything uh, did our graphic uh, graphic artist. So he used uh, he used feature called Matina for animation, and I helped with some scripts, uh, some blueprints for him, but. I think the 90% of the teaser uh, he did by himself. So that's quite amazing the graphics artists can do in engine and the whole whole teaser. So I will show up my presentation. And you have any questions? Hi. Oh, okay. I have one question. We are on the similar path. We are switching now from Unity to Unreal, but uh, the question is about colliders. It's a very specific thing. Uh, I want to ask if it's fixed in Unreal 4, because we before used UDK 3, and the colliders were some sort of nightmare. So that's one thing which is still kind of holding us. Uh, colliders. So I think... They are not fixed because uh, using uh, using anti colliders in dynamics and scripting with them, but I am not really sure about it, so <laughs> I cannot uh, proper answer your question. But I think it's not uh, not fixed because we dynamically rotating the colliders, we moving with colliders and etc. So I think that's uh, there's no problem with colliders. If I answer your question, uh, so sorry, so. Is there or isn't? Uh, because the thing is that we really had a hard time. We implemented some space, and we had a really hard time with with uh, totally strange behavior. Uh, unlike in Unity, which was one thing where colliders were working there out of the box, and it was surprising that even people working on kind of high-profile games like Silent Hill 8 and stuff had problems with colliders. So, but not in Unreal Engine 4, because 4 is a very fresh thing. So my question was if you have experience with colliders. Yeah, we're using our prototypes of colliders, but we never encountered some problems with them. I, oh, I see. Okay, thank you. <laughs> okay. Are you 
I'm new in Unity. I, I uh, don't know Unreal, but my question is, uh, what's really um, harder in Unreal than uh, in Unity for for uh, one person who is who is starting to do this? <laughs> okay, uh, what is harder for one person? Uh, I think the UI of the Unreal Engine is quite a complex uh, than Unity 3D. Um, the using if you if you have experience in Unity. It will be a little bit harder to use Unreal Engine 4 because some things are a little bit different than in the Unreal Engine 4. So uh, you need to do some kind of mind switch uh, to work with Unreal Engine 4. Uh, also, if you are not good at programming, can be can be barrier uh, the C++ code. But I think with the C++ 11 extension is easy to write C++ code now. No, oh, easy easier, I think, and. Uh, in Unity 3D, you write a C sharp code, and real time it will be compiled to the game, and you can use it. Uh, this feature is uh, Unreal Engine 4 too. Uh, it's called hot, hot Reload, so you can uh, modify your script, your code in the C++ in Visual Studio or Xcode or like other, in other IDs, and click uh, on in the Unreal Engine to the compile, and he will be compiled the DLL and load it dynamically to the game. So it's Little bit slower these things in uh, the Unreal Engine 4 because it's C++ code, but uh, it's uh, it's uh, same same thing as in Unity 3D. So, which can be also harder. I think the uh, the we have some not so problems, but we have some uh, difference uh, differences between the texture. Uh, importing the texture because Unreal Engine 4, when you drag and drop the texture into it, it will be converted to TGA format. As, yeah, TGA. Uh, and the Unity uh, will uh, save the original format. So this was a little bit, a uh, little bit mind switch for us. And uh, Unreal Engine 4 uh, writes the changes in your project when you create, for example, new blueprint. Uh, writes the changes to the file system after uh, Control S or automatic save. So when you create a blueprint and don't press the Control S, you will lose your blueprint. So, uh, but if you exit the Unreal Engine 4 with the cross uh, on the uh, right top corner, it will say, "Hey, you have unsaved things. Do you like to save it?" But if you press Stop the, in the debugger of Visual Studio, you will lose everything. So this can be a little bit different uh, in Unity. But I think this. Uh, this is only the first time barrier. So when you will work with uh, Unreal Engine 4 for, let's say, a uh, week, two weeks, it will be easy peasy for you. Uh, hi, I have two questions. First is, uh, did you try any prototypes or try to deploy, uh, for example, iOS uh, build or Android build with uh, Unreal Engine? Uh, we try it, but with not our game, we download it from the marketplace, the mobile temple, on, I don't know, some temple. The, the project on the marketplace is uh, it's something like Asset Store and the Unity. Uh, Unreal Engine have a uh, marketplace, and you can download some free stuff. So we downloaded the project called Sun Temple and try to deploy it to iOS and Android, but not our code. And did you experience any issues during uh, deployment? No, I think not, because on the deployment on the Android was easy on the Windows, and we tried the deployment on the Mac OS. On the Mac OS, the Unreal Engine 4 is a little bit slower if you have uh, if you have older Mac, but uh, the deployment was quite easy without problems. Yeah, I'm asking because I used Unity for Android and iOS deployment, and I, I, I got some strange bugs. For example, after build, uh, some kind, a couple of animations didn't play, which crashed my game, and I had to just simply rebuild the game to, to make it uh, play. Yeah, we know uh, this, this problem we have. To yeah, uh, the mechanism also. and stuff. And, uh, yeah. No, uh, yeah, I think the build to the uh, iOS and Android is without problems, but I cannot say it from my experience because we, our code never built to the iOS and Android. Uh, hi. Uh, did you ever try uh, apply high poly meshes in Unreal 4? I tried yesterday and it took hours to import uh, FBX files with, with high poly rates. Is there a solution? Do you know something? 
Oh, I don't know the exact number, but we tried our 3D model from 3D Studio Max to import in FBX format, and we doesn't encode some, any, any problems. So it was it was high poly, it was not uh, low poly things, uh, and we didn't encode some problems. About how high poly? Do you oh. know? Do you remember? Uh, no, no, I can't say the exact number. I don't know, but... Millions? <laughs> Is, do, I, do, I, I you know, do you know, is there a, a limitation of the, of the poly count for one object I know from Unity? It's about 65,000 polygons and then it splits the object into parts. Yeah, yeah, I don't know the limitation from my head, sorry. Okay, uh, another question. Did you uh, uh, have a look at the substance painter? Do you know that? Uh, yeah, we tried the Substance Painter and Unreal Engine 4 has Substance Painter plugin, so you can use your Substance... Uh, oh, not the Painter, okay, sorry, I, I, uh, I mix it with the Substance Materials. Uh, we use the Substance Materials, but not the Substance Painter, so I don't, know, I don't have experience with Substance Painter. If, uh, but we have uh, experience with Substance Materials when we create in Substance Editors and Unreal Engine, have, Unreal Engine 4 have plugin for the Substance Materials and can be, uh, can be worked, uh, it working in the Unreal Engine 4. Okay, but, but the Substance Painter is content of the, of the Unreal Engine, is that true? Uh, uh, can you repeat it please? Uh, is, is the substance, uh, substance Painter inside the Unreal Engine or is this a separate tool? Uh, no, no, no. Substance Painter is separate tool. I okay, think. okay. Uh, yeah, I think it's separate tool because it's it's not things from Epic, as I okay, know. Okay, <laughs> okay. And you have uh, 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 did did you check uh, uh, global illumination, real time global illumination? Is that okay in 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 the Unreal Engine? Uh, yes, uh, we check it, we try it, and it looks quite amazing. If I had my work PC here, I will, I, I will show you a demo with global animation, but I don't have you. Uh, yes, Unreal Engine have uh, real-time global animation. That we, we tried, uh, for example, dynamic weather, time of day, and ATC. With global animation, it works quite amazing. But I don't have demo here, sorry. Okay, thanks. <laughs> no problem. Sorry, one more question for me. Uh, what kind of version control you use with Unreal? Uh, we use the Plastic SCM, if mm -hmm. you know it. Uh, we tried the Git, but the Git is not good for the big, uh, big file, big mm -hmm. binary files. Uh, we think about Mercurial and SVN, but we ended with Plastic SCM because we uh, we use it in uh, in the past with Unity, and it's free for the small teams. I think up to ten people. Uh, okay, because I know that uh, we of course ran into this um, asset server issue with Unity. You have to buy license per seat for five hundred euros or five hundred dollars. Sorry, yeah. but uh, the thing is that we also experimented with this P force for UDK three three point five. Uh, we had some kind of hard time with it. So is it better integrated in the in the four? You can just or oh. is it just uh, does it require energy? kind of external setup that you have to set it yourself and uh, you have to take care, or is it integrated into the editor? Uh, to the editor is implemented, as I know, Git and SVN. Okay. Uh, really into the editor, so you can commit, push from the uh -huh. editor. But Plastic SCM, we're using a standalone application. So okay. we don't imp uh, implement the features into the, into the engine, but uh, we simply create the repository, put the code, and that's all. And visual assets like uh, as well, levels and everything is going yeah, through this. Yeah, everything there. Mm, so basically the team has to care themselves about commits and updates basically. Yeah, yeah. Every, every member of team needs to commit, push, create branch, merge, and etc. Yeah, and do they don't have notification about changes. Okay, uh, that's why I'm asking um, about the workflow. Yeah, because we are in the one big office, so we, oh, okay. if program would oh, change something, <laughs> hey guys, <laughs> pull down your code. Yep, thank you, thank you, that answers no that. Problem. Are there any questions left? So, because there's some time left, I have a question. So first of all, thank you for your great talk. Um, I'm interested in the blueprints. So oh, how was the workflow from blueprints into C++? So 
don't know if you mentioned it. Uh, yeah, blueprints uh, can extend the C++ classes. So if you create some C++ class, you can call blueprints, uh, you can from blueprint call the C++ methods. But also, also you can uh, call blueprints, uh, blueprints methods from the C++ code. Uh, the Workflow is easy. Uh, when you uh, need to create function in C++ or method of the class uh, to be called in Blueprint, you will put simple uh, C++ macro called uh, uFunction, and it will it will create reflection to the to the Blueprint system and can be called from the Blueprint system. Uh, well, I meant um, you said you translated the Blueprints into C++ to get better performance. So is there built-in possibility uh, for from Unreal to get blueprints connections into C++. Ah, uh, yeah, uh, sorry for misunderstanding. No, no problem, that was also interesting. Uh, no, no, this, this thing is not uh, automatic, but it will be cool if it will have uh, automatic conversion from blueprint. So when we have final version of blueprint and game designer will say, okay, it's cool, uh, I will take uh, my keyboard and uh, C++ code from the blueprint, but it's easy because uh, a little bit easy because uh, the blueprint systems are, let's say, uh, the same logic you will apply to C++. So you need only to know the C++ syntax. So I think it's easy to convert from blueprint to C++. Did you gain any performance from it, or didn't you uh, measure it? Yeah, I think the, we did a small benchmark uh, when we have full logic in the blueprint. The overhead was, I think. 10% and the C++ was overhead free. Okay, yeah, thank you. Sir, any open questions? So, thank you for your talk. Thank, thank you, you so for your questions. Thank you.